Hey everybody, what's going on? Rob Sestrino back here with some bonus coverage here for Big Brother 25 here on a Saturday afternoon. Uh, we got a fun one here today. Taryn, how are you? I'm doing great. Very excited, Rob. Okay, we're very excited to talk to a guy who is uh, the big brother of uh, somebody we've been following all season long, the Wurtenberger with the best facial hair. It's Zach Wurtenberger. Hey guys, how are yeah. you doing? <laughs> did you did you eat a booger just now? What? No. What? <laughs> no, I wasn't in the edit. Okay. You don't see everything on the feeds. Rob. You don't see everything. Mm. Okay, uh, Zach, I mean, uh, it's been a couple of weeks since we checked in, so I thought it would be fun to jump back on with you and see how you are doing, as now Corey has reached top half, final eight. Yeah, I mean, it's, you say a couple of weeks, I, I think the I think the more accurate descriptor is two months, I believe. Wow. I was looking at the last time that we, um, that we spoke and it was literally in a post Riley world. <laughs> Felicia, yeah. had, Felicia had just nominated Cam and Jag mm -hmm. and Isom was still professors to the end. Wow. Like, you know what? The, the day that we spoke was the day that Jared had had his first, like, I started seeing women as people talk. <laughs> like, yeah. That was the start of people online not liking Jared. He's gone through a whole arc since then. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a completely different show. I feel like I'm talking about Big Brother 26 right now. Like well, luckily there's been longer. there's been like a whole three evictions since then too. So Exactly, yeah. Yeah. We lost Zach, Red. Yep. <laughs> Who can forget? Yeah. Zach, what have you been up to? I've just been working. Um working and watching Big Brother, watching Survivor now. Mm -hmm. Survivor is fun to watch cuz it's like it's a really good show. Yeah. Um, and oh, I just started watching House of the Villains. Yes. That's a good show. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's been work, work and TV, honestly. Okay. Well, uh, thanks for making some time here to uh, talk with us. And so uh, give us, how are you feeling with uh, Corey heading into the final month of the season? So good. I'm ready for it to be over. <laughs> I'm so ready. Uh, no, it's literally like, this has been a very long journey for the Wurtenberger household, yeah. I would say. Um, the quick history. We start night one. He's pulled into the zombie verse or whatever, mm -hmm. into the nether regions, excuse me. Then um, I, it was like week three or four. All of a sudden, everyone was turning on him. I remember, Taryn, you were like, yeah, I, I don't know how they don't get targeted within like a week or two when it was like, him in America, like, and Suri had fully turned on him. It really looked like that was going to be the end around, like, 12, 11. Then the entire house flips, specifically due to Corey, against Suri's structure. The worst case scenario HOH happens <laughs> immediately yep. after uh, and somehow doesn't target him. Corey wins the double eviction, manages to then get that person out. But wait, he didn't <laughs> get him out. Mm-hmm. Because Zombie Week brought yep. that person and the person before, Cameron, who hates him for weird, creepy reasons. That person then wins HOH, almost eliminates Corey, and has everything lined up. And by the grace of Jack, <laughs> yeah. Corey manages to skate by into jury, and now he can just go. When you say now he can just go, like his game can take off or he can go to the jury house? both because yeah. for us like for me i feel like we won like he made jury never done before by a wordenberger mm -hmm. um he has surpassed all of our expectations in his experience here we're like obviously we all still want him to win and like we're rooting for him and we'll be like devastated if he does end up getting voted out this week or next week or wherever especially as the money starts to get more real um, but it's, we're just all so proud of him. Like this has been incredible and I hope he gets to do even more. But when you look at like his resume up to this point, it's really like, you know, it's more than we could have ever expected. He's beat the odds. Is he what? He's beat the odds. Yes, exactly. Like it's more than we could have ever expected, uh, when he like left us in July. Yeah.
Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, it feels like that's, uh, that's sort of his perspective too. Like hearing him talk in the house, he's talking with Cam last week about like, honestly, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to getting out of here. Like, um, like, uh, he's talking to the cameras about like, uh, yeah, this is like, uh, you know, not as fun anymore as it used to be. Um, I think he also kind of, I think also he's recognizing that like his position is a little tough. Um, and he's talked a lot about like how he really, he wanted to play a more subtle game and he has about, he has the subtlety of like a hammer. He's just like, everything he does is so obvious and he doesn't know how to fix it. Um, but like, uh, you know, I, I think that, uh, so yeah, I, I think that he, he shares that perspective. Well, All right. I just want to invite the chat. Also, if you have questions for Zach, you can go ahead and post them in the chat and we'll, uh, bring them on here, uh, during the show. Yeah. Go ahead, Zach. Um, on that, on his like subtlety, his kind of lack of like ability to like hide his thoughts and his feelings. Um, I love to do like comparisons to like former players and stuff. And I'm curious what you guys think of this comparison for Corey. To me, the player he reminds me the most watching is Adam Klein in Millennials. Oh, interesting. Mm. Yeah. As a player who used his like brutal honesty as mm. a superpower as someone who would like really piss people off by being too blatant of like no that doesn't make sense why would you do this like why would i like to camp why would i work with you now like and I'm he was in camp. like some very dire straits in terms of like his positioning yeah. especially like at the beginning of the merge and then his game got blown up on a couple of occasions where everybody was mad at him and he managed to you know figure out a way to get it done because at the same token, he had the meat shields in front of him mm -hmm. that were always going to need to be taken out first. He got the jury's respect in the end because they felt like they always knew he was playing and they always knew uh, he was thinking and playing hard. And also the fact that um, at a certain point when you're so forthcoming with your opinions, yes, it does paint a target to, on you to some degree, but it also makes people more comfortable in like, okay, but we know what he's thinking. He might be this smart guy, but like we've got mm -hmm. him figured out, and that actually dethreatens him. Yeah, I, th I think that's a, a very good comparison, actually. I think that, um, it like the way that they've played the game, the way that they communicate in the game all kind of works. Uh, and, and like I would say, unfortunately, like that position I think works better for Adam, at least at this point in the in where they are in the game, more so because those meat shields winning immunities isn't as big of a deal as them winning those like HOHs in Big Brother. It's, Big Brother, these competitions are just so important. Um, but I, but I, you know, it's, it's, I do agree also though that like, cause I've been saying this, I think if Corey makes it to the final two, I think he has a hard time losing um, because of this perspective that people have of him where they don't want him to make it to the end. Um, and they also think he's doing so much that like he beats a fair amount of people if he gets there. You know, Adam in Winners at War, I think, is also interesting. You know, we think of Adam from his winning game. But, you know, Adam, you know, ends up getting into so many different arguments with people in Winners at War because I feel like that he's always the guy who is, like, trying to maybe do too much where even when he has, like, an enemy, then he's then, like, always then trying to back channel, like, with that enemy and trying to make it work and then sometimes that gets blown up too and so i do think that there's uh, some of that too in like what Corey has been through over these last couple of weeks yeah and it makes sense like if you had told me beforehand like this would be Corey's flaw this would be like one of the things that gets him in hot water i would have 100 percent been like yeah that tracks <laughs> like just knowing him that that makes sense as being something that he would do too much of Mm -hmm. I mean, well, speaking of flaws, I feel like there's a, like a major flaw that uh, really I think we can all blame you for this for not preparing him better. Um, why didn't you teach him how to kiss better before going on the show? Good question. Because, because I didn't want him to get into a showmance. <laughs> mm -hmm. I thought that the yeah, if he was too good. <laughs> yeah, I was, you know. All the advice I've given him my whole life has been wrong <laughs> Just to set him up so that when, if the showman's came, he would blow it on the first pin. <laughs> Little did you know, washing machine America would come along. 
<laughs> Look, I like, I agree that like, and I blame the producers for this too, that the volume. <laughs> now I just, the difference between you and me is I just turn it off. Like, mm -hmm. that's yeah. I'm just, I'm not watching that. Right. <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> I don't need the Wurtenberger experience. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, that's been, so that's another thing that's happened in the past two months. Right. Um, I remember the last time you guys were asking me like, so Corey in America, you think anything's there? And I was like, oh, we'll see. We'll see. And in my mind, I was like, no, no, that's not, that's not happening. Mm -hmm. um, and then it did. Yeah. And yeah, they're official. And they're official. Yeah. I'm going to meet her on finale night. Yes. Okay. This is a uh, very unusual circumstances where maybe, you know, this could be maybe your future sister-in-law, America. That is true. Uh, that's crazy to think about. I think she might come to Thanksgiving. <laughs> like, unironically, I mean. You, you, know, you don't know. Uh, have they talked, that, her, talked like, about it? Have they worked that out? Uh, I don't think they've specifically spoken about that. Honestly, yeah. Corey might go to her Thanksgiving. He might just be like. Yeah. Where does America live? She lives in. Um, oh, she lives in New York. Yes. She's from okay. Texas, but lives in New York. Got it. And Corey has been uh, living in Fl in Florida, right? And goes to school in uh, Nashville. Okay. All right. What's well, all like Eastern side of the country? I guess so. Could well, work. Rob, he's going to take a gap year now. Uh, mm -hmm. And so there's going to be some time. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. He does have a gap year in there. Yep. And then what? The challenge or the amazing race? <laughs> the challenge USA. I mean, it's right there in the name. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think she suggested Love Island. And uh, he said no. Well, usually, ideally, you don't go as a couple to Love Island. Or no, no. Maybe it was Temptation Island. I don't know. Temptation One of those. Island. Yeah. Island I mean, or, what was it? The Vow? What was, mm -hmm. what was the one that's the... Um, the one that was like all all um, LGBT people. Oh. Ultimatum, ultimatum, yeah. ultimatum, yes, ultimatum. Exactly, yes. Yeah, I, I don't think they should go to Temptation Island. Uh, I think that that would be a mistake. <laughs> I, agree. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Zach, this week we saw the Zingbot come in and really roast Corey pretty hard. Did you feel like that the Zingbot should have taken it a little easier on your brother? No, definitely not. Uh, that's I, I saw a, a thread or a, a Reddit post or something of like the greatest zings of all time. And I saw people being like, honestly, Corey's has to be up there somewhere. And look, I like that's that's all you want, right? You want your zing to be memorable. You don't want to be the lame burkini. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to be like, you're dumb. I'm like, no, you want the full song, like really trying to pinpoint at your insecurities. Um, yeah, I was crying it. when it was on. I was, I, I did, you know, uh, I knew that there was a song or something, but then uh, the, hearing the whole thing, I, I just thought it was, it was so good. I thought that the, um, the one that they didn't even mention on the feeds, but just calling him a tiny man. Yeah. <laughs> there was no even joke there. There was no like, <laughs> it's just an insult, which is great. He's as tall as a piece of grain. Mm. Right, yeah. But that doesn't even have the weight of just a tiny man. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You think it's figuratively awesome. also? I don't... I won't respond to that question. <laughs> <laughs> like when Boston Rob said uh, to oh, coach, uh, you're a little uh, man. Oh. Yeah. You're a little man, coach. Mm -hmm. Robin, uh, coach, till time. Yeah. Uh, Zach, could you just, okay, I know you're biased towards uh, Corey, and uh, of course, uh, we understand that, but how would you, if, if you were going to be, prognosticate, like, how the the next few rounds of the game go, how do you see it all coming together? Um, I think that if I were to assume, I, I think that this week is really fraught with danger, just purely based on this veto twist. And obviously, Corey's in a good spot now. But like, if two nominees have to be taken off of the block, um, that could quickly turn sour for him. But I'm just going to take that veto twist out, assume things stay the course for this week. Blue goes home. Mm -hmm. I think after that, the, the jag and the jag playing in the HOH is so annoying again, because otherwise, like, I'd feel a good shot of Matt or Bowie, hopefully not winning the HOH. 
Because then I think that Jag and Matt really have to be the targets at that point. Um, you get one of them out, and then next, I mean, Corey and America would probably have to be the main targets, although you still have one of Jag or Matt in that are still the biggest comp threats. Um, I mean, Jag more so than Matt, because Matt really has only one, one comp at this point. Um, but I, I think then we're going to see either one of Corey or Jag slash Matt, whichever one's remaining, eliminated. And then at that point, I could honestly see, like, the uh, the women all coming together. And at that point, it's like, all right, we've got one, we've got one man, like, four women. Why don't we just take them out, like, do a little, you know, uh, DIY Black Widow Brigade here. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> the best chance. And uh, then I could see the final four of all, like, Bowie, Sari, Felicia, and America. So, uh, yeah, Bowie, Sari, Felicia, and America. Could you... Uh squint here and okay so sari is sari mm-hmm. i think Ameri- sari wins is it if, well if that's the final four i was yeah. just gonna map it um mm-hmm. then america is parvati yeah okay bowie is amanda i think bowie is um more this is tough i think bowie is maybe more natalie no, 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 no. No, I think I think yeah, Amanda Bowie, probably yeah. fits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Felicia yeah. is Natalie. Yeah. <laughs> <Very good. laughs> okay. So, Zach, what's been some of the other things uh, that have been very interesting for you watching Corey play uh, so far over the last couple of weeks? I mean, it's just, there's so much that we've missed, like, talking about in the past two months. So I'll, I'll go back and talk about, like, the move of the season of um, basically, you know, I, I won't say single-handedly because America played a part. Um, Jag played a big part. Uh, Cameron played a big part. I mean, he's the one who literally won the HOH and made the noms. He definitely deserves credit there. But Corey was really the one who, like, had that decisive, like, we are flipping right now. I'm going to go make it happen um, against Suri and Izzy and Jared. And they were the power structure throughout the entire game. They were controlling everything. And we've seen this time and again with Paul, with, uh, you know, with Boston Rob, with, with so many of these players who come in and just complete, or Cody is another good one, just completely have their webs everywhere. Um, and I, I can't think of, another one other than maybe grateful that has just completely collapsed within the span of 24 hours, like the way that Corey was able to make Suri's structure collapse. And I think that's like his, his shining accomplishment. And I think that's like the most impressive thing he's done all game. Yeah. I, I, you know, I think that um, it does remind me a lot of, uh of of what happened to grateful mostly because cliff was a huge part of that too um he cliff was less involved in like the the whole structure but he was like trying to feed you know things to both sides to get them to turn on each other uh whereas Corey, um maybe it's a it, it's it reminds me a little bit of like uh the first five from big brother canada too where we're like um yeah, that's a uh uh, Arlie is going to like, uh, you know, blow the whole thing up um, to to try to better himself. And then, you know, ultimately then didn't didn't get into a better position. Right. Um, so maybe it really tracked. Uh, but um, but yeah, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, it, it was it was this huge move. Um, at the time, I was like, it, this makes sense because the the tides were really starting to turn on Corey in terms of like longevity uh because they were really looking at targeting america and jared had even talked about maybe even getting Corey out before america um and so it seemed like the timing was right the problem was that uh there were still so many other big comp threats left in the game um and and it seemed like Corey was almost setting up to be like okay i can have mimi and felicia here i can have matt and jag here we can have cam as a third over here um you know, Bowie is a third, Cam and Bowie really as uh, another one over here. Um, But then, you know, Jared wins, things get a little messy. And, um, and then he kind of gives up that power to Matt and Jag. Um, And I think the, the, the biggest thing holding him back right now is, is the loss of Bowie. Um, Because 
it would be so much easier to take that shot at Matt and Jag next week if he felt like he also had Bowie as the third. Um, because Bowie supports the move. Then they go into next week. America and Bowie are competing. They just need to beat Matt if they take out Jag, basically. Um, or hope that Suri, you know, hope it's not a comp that Suri or Felicia can win. And then and then they get one more and it's done. Um, and so uh, the loss of Bowie, I think, is the thing that hurts the most. Uh, but the loss of Cam was also uh, tricky, but also, I think, unavoidable because of the whole situation. Yeah, I mean, Cam Cam was unfortunately had to be a casualty of like the Jared HOH that should have taken him out. Um, and like that was obviously a big stopping point because Corey and America then had to go into survival mode. Mm-hmm. And then zombie week, I think they took the foot off the gas, which I mean, I did too. I didn't watch, I didn't watch <laughs> a single thing zombie week. I literally turned the feeds off for a full week and then came back and was like, Wait, what's where? where where's Corey? <laughs> if, even the family members couldn't bear to watch Zombie Week. No, I like, was telling my family, I was like, "This is kind of nice to have like a hiatus, a yatus, mm-hmm. like to be, uh, you know, have a little break." Um, I think Bowie. He, I, I still believe that Bowie is gettable, especially after some of the antics that uh, right. Jack has pulled off this week. Yeah, I think that Bowie is not someone who's just gonna like lock in hardcore. Um, I think that me, Cole, and Felicia. Unfortunately, I just don't think that me Cole was going to make herself available in that way to like really play that kind of game. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I don't particularly blame Corey for that because I, I really I mean, socially, he obviously could have just, I guess, handled her better. But I, I think that she was always going to be a little bit of a, a blockade in terms of like trying to get someone onto your side. And I mean, I think Corey is doing as good a job uh, with Felicia as he possibly can, considering that they are like literally two opposites. <laughs> like they are the two furthest away from each other in the entire house. And for them to like actually still like each other and like even if they're against each other in the game, not have like any true bad blood against each other, I think is is pretty impressive. Do you think, is there any potential for there to be like a final two, like a, Karen and Kevin Martin with Felicia and Corey. <laughs> it's tough to see the road there because that involves America going out um, before Corey. I guess Corey wins a veto and then they take America out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I guess in that case, I kind of can see that. I think that's actually probably one of Corey's more dangerous final twos, just because I think that like Felicia is, if Felicia gets to the end, there's really that like aspect of like, wow. Like she, like after being nominated all these times after, mm-hmm. I think he still gets um, America, Jag, Matt, and probably Cameron, maybe Bowie. So I think he'll still be okay. Mm-hmm. Very fun, though. Yeah. All very, right. Uh, very Mike and Marianne, I'd say. I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have to ask about the the competition stuff too because. Uh, this has been one of my my biggest sources of frustration with Corey is that uh, he keeps talking about all the mental comps at the end of the season um, that uh, that we know have become a lot more physical lately. Uh, and so, like, not only is he probably wrong in his prediction, but he's also telling people that he's going to dominate the end game comps, which even if he was right, like, why? <laughs> um, do you have any insight on this? Well, it's your biggest frustration and it's like our biggest frustration too. Like, you know, we'll be, I call my parents basically like every day now, just like talking about what's going on on the Mm -hmm. show, catching up. And the amount of times that I've heard my mom say like, he's such a fucking idiot. (laughs) (laughs) Is like, you know. Because of the mustache and then also the competitions. Look. We might have to wait on Stephanie Wurtenberger to go on one of these shows to get a win. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We keep getting a little bit closer. Um, so, like, we we share that frustration. If I had to guess, if I had to, like, because this was something that started, like, early, right? Mm-hmm. Well, like, he, because the, the thing that he taught, he had a conversation with Izzy very early on where he said, endgame competitions are usually pretty physical. Uh, like, or at least he talked about like how they were going to have a hard time winning end game competitions. Yeah. Um, and so I thought, okay, he knows. Um, and, uh, but then, but then that completely went away. So I'm, I was a little confused. 
Well, I think that there's if it, if I were to like try and like make a strategy out of it and like really like just like think about it. Um, basically, we, we talked about how like I kind of took that one strategy from Big Brother that I don't think actually applied to Survivor particularly well mm -hmm. of like having an enemy. Um, I could see this being Corey as such a huge Survivor super fan taking something that like comes in Survivor, which is especially earlier in the game, trying to show your strengths to your alliance, trying to show your value, especially as someone who was not winning those early comps and, in fact, was probably, like, throwing some of them, but, like, I don't even think it mattered he was throwing them. I think he was going to lose all of them anyways. Um, to be able to then say to your alliance, like, no, 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 I'm going to be able to help you guys later. Um, that We see that in Survivor. We saw that with um, Brandon on 45, right? Is he tells his tribe, like, okay, guys, I know I sucked in that challenge, but, like, you, you guys are going to need me for the puzzles. I'm going to be good on the puzzles. Then a puzzle comes. He's now forced to do the puzzle and isn't able to do that. Um, you know, you can kind of shoehorn yourself into like doing these. Uh, um, point being, you're trying to show value to your allies, to your alliance. Um, and I don't think that works as much in an individual game like Big Brother. Mm -hmm. But that's yeah. also me making something up. I, th I think you're right. I mean, that's the vibe that I get, especially because there's so much talk about like, how Jag and Matt are doing all the work. Um, and I think that, I do think that he is trying to be like, hey, you guys are carrying me here, but I'll be able to help you guys out in the future against, uh, you know, against them in these mental comps. But uh, obviously, like, if they're playing remotely self-interested, they'll just be like, well, <laughs> why don't we just do that for ourselves? <laughs> I think he also just has a big mouth. I mean, I think that's yeah. the other thing. Is that, like, and there's not that much to talk about. You know. Zach, how are things going running Corey's social media accounts? Oh, I've I, it's I, for running Corey's social media accounts, it's just so exhausting because I got like he's very particular. He was like, I don't want you tweeting dumb shit on my accounts. So I mm -hmm. was like, I, I'm like, just I got to be careful to not like post anything that he wouldn't want. Um, and then or what? Point, or what, Zach? Or he's going to be annoying. Mm -hmm. So like what like what would what would qualify? Because like would something like this qualify? That is what we call sh money. <laughs> is that? Don't ever repeat that. That was not something I said. I oh. think he'd be okay with that. Strike think... that from the record. <laughs> no, it keeps going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it keeps going. <laughs> he says sh money. By the way, like let me just. Like, I've, heard <laughs> I've heard him like play Valorant and stuff like from his room oh, and he no. shouts at three a.m. And he says, like, just the dumbest shit like that. <laughs> That's really him. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, with, with Instagram and Twitter, like, I try to keep up with his. It's just harder because I got to be more conscious. Also, it's weird to, like, there, there was a very funny thing. Um, uh, I think Ry when Riley got out of the house, I saw all of these, like, different contestant social media accounts commenting, like, uh, love you, Riley. And it's, like, blue. <laughs> but it, they'd be, like... I miss when we would do this in the house. Oh. And it's like, that's not you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm kind of cautious of that. Uh, and also, like, when he gets out of the house, everyone's going to follow him anyways, you know? Mm -hmm. Social okay. media is a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. I want to bring in, we got a lot of questions pouring in for you, Zach. Uh, you're very popular. Uh, here's one from a fan. Um, Stephanie Wurtenberger said, how is Zach feeling now that Marianne got engaged? <laughs> Thank you, mom. <laughs> um, I'm feeling so good that Marianne's got engaged. I'm so happy for her. I've never been happier, actually. I've never <laughs> been happier. Because, um, you know, Corey's found love and Marianne's found love. Mm -hmm. I, I love love. Um <laughs> What I'm really excited about with Marianne's engagement to Connor, who's amazing. I've met him several times. Um, I don't really think he looks like me. I know. I, I, don't, I don't see that at all. I don't understand how they're like, wow, she found another Zach. I'm like, we we really are just mm -hmm. white dirty guys. Like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Um, I am excited for the wedding, which should prove to be the 42 reunion that we never got. Yeah. Uh, that is going to be very fun. Okay. Also, uh, your mom said that the mustache is all America's fault. We should all blame her. 
Wow. My mom's saying blame America. Hardcore. <laughs> hardcore stand. I love um if you if anyone's curious, go follow my mom on Twitter. Yeah. Go through her her Twitter likes. It's a very like, you know. If you want <laughs> if you want just like pure, if you want to like condense your Twitter feed to like pure positive Corey content. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is like go to my mom's Twitter and look at her likes. Every positive tweet that has ever been said about Corey <laughs> is present in that list. Yeah. Okay. How about um, uh, Jeremy in the chat? One though, who is Zach Wurtenberger? It's me. <laughs> <laughs> I oh. you you manage the, what's crazy is, and not that I'm like a stickler for spelling. Uh, I'm not. I'm not practicing for the spelling comp. Yeah, but it it is in the title. So to manage to get the first and last name wrong, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Then let's see. Um, how about uh, Corey wants to know uh, how have you handled the stress of seeing your brother in in-game danger? That's a really good question, actually. Um, it's been, it's varied. Um, like, and the the answer, by the way, every single time has been, um, I don't know why I said it varied because it doesn't. Um, the answer every time is stepping away. Um, the, the two major points where I was really like sick to my stomach with like nervousness was um, the, the zombie comp when he gets pulled out week one and the, um, the Cameron week that just happened where it looked like everything, well, you know, his eviction was signed. And what I would find is I would find myself on Twitter every five minutes, just looking for positive news and like literally letting it consume my entire day. Yeah. And, relatable. Yeah. And what I had to do was like delete Twitter for that time, like force myself to not use the app, not because of like hate or anything. It's a, I don't care about that. It was like just purely like, me looking for updates looking like to see what yeah. is happening in the house this second um and i yeah. knew i'm helping i believe they call that doom scrolling yes exactly yeah, it's, mm -hmm. and this is a very i guess a very silly version of that like uh but it's it, it's been really like and meanwhile both of them they ended up just like working out luckily um which has been crazy mm -hmm. when like, that morning i like i'm calling my dad and he's like He's like, yeah, well, they flipped. And I'm like, what? What do you mean they flipped? And, like, that was when Jag had had that conversation with Cameron that, like, fully put the uh, the back door off. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, yeah, it's really just been knowing myself, knowing when it gets to an unhealthy place and, like, focusing on other things. Yeah, like, I always, you know, when votes are flipping back and forth, I'm always, like, uh, from the perspective of, like, okay, well, we'll be talking to this person you know, on Thursday or Monday or whenever, uh, like thinking up questions, what we'll ask them, thinking this is the person that's going to be evicted. And then when something flips, it's like, oh, I guess I'm not talking to that person. Yeah. But like for you, it must have been like, I'm going to be seeing Corey in a few days. Oh, wait, never mind. It's going to be a month and a half. Yeah. Well, and the other thing for me, like genuinely going into this show, the only two things that I cared about was one, Corey doesn't ruin his life, which, you know, let's knock on wood, but I think that we're, We've got like 25 more days. Mm -hmm. I, I think he's going to be okay. And yeah. two, that he has a positive experience. Like I just want him to have like, I want his big brother experience to be something that he looks back on with like, you know, with joy and like th that he loves. Um, and I was really nervous about being in that, like making it nine weeks and then being barely cut right before the jury, not getting to like, be with America in that time. I was like, that would be a really brutal place to go. And that's also why I was gutted um, mm -hmm. thinking that he could go there. And now that he's made jury, it's a little bit more of like weight off our shoulders. Like even if he is evicted this week and gets eighth place, like he can hold his head high and like, could be worse. Like I'm not really going to be there like coddling him. And if he's like, Oh, right. I get that. I got eighth place. Okay. Um, Zach, we have have we talked to you since they uh, highlighted you on the show? No, no, that was uh, post. What was that like? Where that you know was not really an essential part of the storyline at that point in time, and then 
it seemed like that you got zinged also from Big Brother. I can tell you exactly what it was like. It was, I was at work, so I wasn't even watching the episode live at that time. And it was, uh, it starts with just 10 texts to me, all being like, oh my God, they're talking about you. Oh my God, you're on the show. I'm like freaking out. Like, I'm like, what, what, what? I'm like seeing all these texts. And it's immediately followed by about 30 texts that are all either the clown emoji. (laughs) (laughs) Or LMAO. (laughs) Bruh, they roasted your ass. (laughs) And I have no clue what's going on. So I'm like, I don't even have a VPN. So I'm like trying to like scroll Twitter, like find the clip. Like, what did they say? What did they say? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. That's what that was like. (laughs) It was the same experience with Beach You Zach, by the way. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Uh, This is a great question from Nikki who wants to know, other than the showman stuff, have you learned something about Corey while watching his game this season? Um. I learned well this is the most time I've spent with Corey in probably like mm-hmm. five years which is crazy like ever since I went to college um I think it's I mean I'm seeing my brother but I'm seeing kind of you know I'm seeing the person that the show is almost transforming him into which I think is overwhelmingly positive. Like when he walked in the last episode with his like shirt unbuttoned, mm-hmm. hair, like his mustache grown in, like I am like, I have no clue who this man is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that for Corey, his biggest like flaw, his biggest weakness as, as just a person has always been that he's not, he's really not a social person. He And it's never been, like, that he's awkward or that he, like, doesn't know what to say or he gets shy. He just doesn't like interacting with people. He'd rather be in his room talking to his, like, few friends than, like, go out to a party or, like, meet new people. And I think that this experience, seeing him kind of, like, forced to interact with all these people, I hope that his takeaway from it is, like, oh, wait, this is really fun. Like, I really like this. And I hope that, like, it kind of helps him to you know, be, be this person, be this social in, in his real life. That, that's been the craziest thing for me is just seeing him basically be able to go 70 something days um, without like shutting himself off in his room or like having mm-hmm. a social battery drained. Cause that's what I was most worried about with him. Yeah. I mean, I think, <clears throat> I think that something that we've definitely noticed is that like the first week, really the first couple of weeks um, especially in the very beginning, you know, he was very nervous, uh, not super comfortable, which was fair given his position at that time. Um, but like over the course of the season, he has definitely gotten a lot more comfortable with himself and, and confident in what he's doing. And, uh, yeah. sometimes to his detriment, both from his end and from other people's end. But, uh, but like, certainly you see that like, there's been, uh, this, this, uh, definite surge of, I think, confidence uh in himself uh which is which is interesting to see because he's so young that like this is this may be like a very developmental like step in his uh his you know growing up look it was it was for me and i was like on the show for three days but the Mm -hmm. experience of going on a show like this um completely changes you especially when you're at a transition point in your life i think it's a little bit different when you have like your family when you have you know, 40 years under your belt of like being this person. Um, but no, it definitely changes you. And I think that for Corey, um, I, I think and I hope it's been positive. Okay. CK Ma says, Are you Team Camerica or Team AmeriCorey? I'm Team AmeriCorey, 100%. I like AmeriCorey. Like, I, I like that it's both of them. Camerica, I agree. Sounds like yeah. a bank. Do they ever come out and talk about their relationship in the third persons? Do they? Because I feel like that they need to like own what it should be called. I think it's. I think it's when we start making the T-shirts. I think. Mm-hmm. That's the, yeah, that's the decider. Mm-hmm. Mm. 
Yeah, usually, I mean, yeah, uh, maybe this is just another thing he wasn't expecting uh, a showman, so he wasn't prepped for this. But like, usually the showmances will name themselves, uh, and they'll call yeah. themselves that. Well, I remember it was um like in the house they called like Matt and Raven called themselves Maven, but mm -hmm. then online I think they called them Rat. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it depends on how much the fans like you, whether they accept yeah. the name or not, but. Oh, but also in terms of like what the rest of the house will call you, like they didn't like Comerica, but they didn't really give enough of a, yeah. an alternative. Mm -hmm. But Zach, did you miss the boat? You were there. You saw the merchandise empire that Carson got going last season. Like, do you blame yourself for not having the AmeriCorey merch ready to go? I blame Corey. Because <laughs> when we're talking about like running his social media and stuff, that's like one of the things that I would love to do. I think it would be fun. I think we would make money. But I know that Corey would be out money. We would make sh money. He would be so upset at us if he found out that we had like Corey pillows. Mm -hmm. Drop some up. fan cams on the Twitter. You know, like uh, yeah, you got to design. Yeah, you got to get yeah. a head start on this showman's merchandising stuff because we're big. having a costume contest at our live show in Brea. Maybe somebody will come in as Corey. Get like the <laughs> yeah. wispy mustache. Yeah, you just need the mustache. The hat. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to see you guys in Brea. That is going to be so much fun. Yeah. OK. All right. Uh, this is from a G Noom roll. Uh, what would Zach give Corey in the stock watch? If you were on the stock watch Monday night, what's your might, rating for might Corey? Depend on the veto results. Oh, well, OK. Yeah, but, but we'll do it like right now. Like second. What do I give him? Um, I think that like, OK, this is another thing that I wanted to bring up. Like, I, I think that there is a thing with people like Corey, like the, the, the gamer stereotype right mm -hmm. where they don't get enough credit for kind of like the social relationships that they create and i think that like the if he makes it through a jag hoh right now it is solely on the merit of jag literally liking Corey better than anyone in this house other than matt mm -hmm. and i think that that connection he has made with jag has been probably the most crucial other than like america obviously but like the most crucial relationship he's had in this entire game and it's with the comp beast it's with like the the cody calafiore like type player um who is social and strong and good at comps and strategic but like too loyal um so i really think that like seeing jag win an hoh and not take the shot at Corey here really has you know and obviously he still can but up to this point, not planning on doing that, really has um, shot Corey up for me in terms of his potential. I would probably give him, I think it really is kind of an open field. I would probably give him a five, like right now, because I think that if he can make it through, and I think if he makes it through this week unscathed, I raise it to a six, mm -hmm. uh, because I just think he then becomes one of the most likely people to win along with Matt, um, yeah, I really think that, like, the, the social relationships that Corey has in this house, yes, he always is being talked about as being a target, but it's always a little bit down the line. Um, yeah, I, I really, I, I would say a five right now. Wow, a five! <laughs> <laughs> no, you, I, you actually, uh, the, the, you stole my points that I was going to make on the stock watch. Uh, <laughs> oh, really? Because <laughs> uh, I completely agree. I think that, like, uh like this is this is the week that's showing to me because I think Jag, I think that Corey is a better target for Jag than Blue. Yes. Um and uh, and I think that uh, and I don't think it's like that big of a deal uh, because really at at the end of it it's just a matter of just winning comps. Um, but uh, but Corey is I think more likely to beat Jag in a mental comp uh, than Blue is, and um, and I think more likely to take a shot than Blue is. Uh, so, uh, I, you know, if, if he had, if you could target either one, I do think the Corey is the better shot to take. And, and to me, it was especially, um, yesterday Jag goes to Matt and says, I can't tell Suri about me being HOH yet, because if blue wins the veto, I need to put Suri on the block. Yeah. It's like, wait a minute. He's not even your backup target because yeah. that's wild. Uh, and so, um, you definitely have to, I think, credit Corey for this uh, this relationship. Um, I and and I think the reason 
it for me it probably stays at a five is just that like the path forward is still so treacherous especially if jag can compete in the next hoh um but uh but yeah i mean i i definitely agree i think that um Corey's work and this is this is interesting too because i think it's it's what Corey was good at in the first part of the season too which is like his being able to pinpoint like the specific person that he needs to stay alive uh, while everyone else hates him. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, as long as like Izzy or Jared or Sarah, as long as one of those three had his bag, he was good. And it's the same sort of thing with Jag uh, and, and Matt to a smaller degree. Yeah. I, I, but I also think a strength of Corey's, a strength and a weakness of Corey's is I think that when Corey has a directive, he is very good at like, planning and executing when he has a goal in mind when he knows i need these three votes when he knows i need to flip riley here i need to get riley on my side i need to get jack on my side i need to convince Nicole and bowie to flip on izzy he's very good i need to out um out talk jared in this moment and get everyone to like not trust jared he's very good when he has a set plan and has to execute mm -hmm. i think where he gets in trouble is in the weeks where he's not in play Mm -hmm. And it gets a lot more nebulous. I think he gets kind of like lost in the sauce and like doesn't really know what to do and will lose his power in that moment. But I, I do think that like, I mean, maybe I'm just delusional, but I think in a world where like Corey and America end up on the block together um, and they both agree like, all right, we're going to be willing to like campaign against each other, like not throw each other under the bus, but like we both want to be here and like fight for it. Um, I think that Corey could go to bed that night, hopefully in a different bed. Um, oh, oh, is he? Yeah. <laughs> and come, yeah, and come, uh, come up with like a plan. Like, okay, these are the votes I need to flip. This is who I need to convince that it is better to keep me in the game than America. Okay, Zach Wonton wants to. What was it like to meet Jag's brother? Oh, that was uh, that was so funny. That was so much fun. Um, so I like messaged. I remember I'd actually even said that I was messaging with a loved one in the last mm -hmm. podcast. Well, spoilers, that was Jack's brother. Um, and uh, we'd been messaging back and forth. And then um, uh, he happens to text me and he's like, hey, well, first of all, when Jag won the veto that um, when Jag had won the veto on Jared's HOH, mm -hmm. and it was like him or Cameron and like Cameron was like 10 seconds away or something. I immediately uh, text Jazz, Jag's brother, and I text Jazz. I'm like, here's my number. Call me right now. And I called him and just like screamed and celebrated with him. And then he came to Los Angeles and he was like, hey, do you want to watch an episode together? Yeah. So I was like, sure, of course. And I invited um, Derek and Claire um, to come. I was texting uh, Kane from Canada the entire time. Oh, here you go. Name yeah. dropping. <laughs> and... Uh, then I, I happened to like go out with uh, Jazz a few more times that weekend. He's just a great guy. I mean, he's just Jag, like he's just mm -hmm. a likable dude. Um, and yeah, we we've been texting and kind of commiserating throughout this experience. It's a very mm -hmm. unique thing, and uh, he's he's been a great person to to go through that with. Yeah. That's really fun. And uh, look, if you get along great with his brother, maybe that speaks to maybe there's something there. It's just like a very compatible relationship between the Wurtenbergers and the Baines. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. so, like, even watching like the preseason thing. Um, when I looked at Jag, I saw his age. I saw his like the way he spoke. I instantly thought to myself, this is the person Corey is going to get along best with. Like just knowing Corey, I could tell that that was like a very natural connection. Um, and I'm not surprised that like it's paid off throughout the show. Mm -hmm. All right. Jess C wants to know, Zach, would you now no. <laughs> yield your spot on the amazing race to America? No, that would be so dumb. We've got like <laughs> such a good story here. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. We've had like, you know, we've had, we've had uh, Jeff and Jordan on the amazing race. We've had Brendan and Rachel, we've had Whitney and Keith, like, mm -hmm. We have the showmances on these shows. We've never had two brothers on separate reality shows come together to do a fully different reality show. We've also seen Corey and America together for like a whole season now. Yeah. That would be absurd. That would be ridiculous. I would be um, 
I would be exposing them pregame. Yeah. If they were chosen over me. Do you want us to put in a good word with Phil Kogan? Yes, please do. Please. please. We have a relationship. Just you have the storyline too of like, uh, like he did better than you on the show. And so now he's got like the bigger head and like he'll, he'll be fighting about it. And I'm like, well, I was on the better show. Mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. on. I would rather have been the first boot of Survivor than, <laughs> than Win Big Brother. Yeah. Than Win Big Brother. Because, like, <laughs> you know, which I do stand by wholeheartedly, by the way. Maybe not Win mm -hmm. Big Brother, but mm -hmm. you have the option of being yeah. like my spot on Survivor or like top three on Big Brother. Um, unironically, I choose Survivor. Yeah. And you've been, I'm sure, like everybody, enjoying the new Survivor season, right? I mean, yeah, I, I've been loving it so far. I will say, because I, yeah. I think it's been overwhelmingly positive. And I do agree that Lulu has been overwhelmingly positive. Um, I was feeling the 90 minutes in the last episode. Like it was too I, long. Like it was too long. Like as someone who like, you know, works. <laughs> <laughs> and like all Wait, your whole life doesn't revolve around these shows. So right. <laughs> and now all of a sudden, like, is already watching too much reality TV with Big Brother. When we were like 30 minutes into the Reba idol hunt, I was like, are you guys <laughs> really kidding me right now? Like, but I will say that like the last half hour of um of last episode, like made up for it all. Yeah. So I, I think that when it's good, it's great. And when it's a little bit like I would hate to watch Redemption Island on 90 minutes. <laughs> yeah, you know? I guess that's a good point yeah uh they gotta like uh, as long as the seasons are good but yeah some of these long these really like uh seasons that are a slog are gonna be even more of a slog it's yeah. a good point okay how about uh let's do uh one or two more questions from the audience and uh let's see i thought i had another good one for you oh yes okay donald wants to know Corey, uh, did you ever talk to Corey about I'm sorry, Zach? Uh, did Corey ever talk to you about philosophy as a jury member? Um, not really, but like not really as in like we, we weren't having conversations before the show of like, OK, what do you do as a jury member? Should you be a bitter juror? Like we never mm -hmm. had that conversation, but we have had an entire lifetime of um discussing juries on survivor and big brother um and i i know that he's going to be going into it with the guy with the with the thought of like wanting to reward the best game but also wanting to give the money and give the win to somebody that he likes the most i mean it's, mm -hmm. he's gonna he's gonna be a very fair juror and he will vote based on like gameplay and also based on like if America's in the end, he's giving her his jury vote. I, I have thought about the I have thought about the world where it is America versus Suri and Cordy's the swing vote and he knows he's the swing vote. Mm hmm And like the turmoil that that would cause him. <laughs> do you do you think it like outside of that scenario, do you think there's any scenario where he doesn't vote for Suri? Um because like I know that he was surprised by like uh, the, her style of play in the first portion of the game. I think he recognizes that like mm -hmm. uh, she's not in control anymore, whereas like you know somebody like Jagger Matt is. Um, but like at the same time, like I, I, if I was in there, it's like I, I don't care how to replay this game. Like I couldn't not vote for her if she's there, right? I think um, in a world where. Assuming that Suri, I mean, in a world where let's say Matt makes it to final three and Matt wins the final HOH and takes Suri to the end, I can't imagine Corey sitting there and he's not thinking to himself like, wow, Matt really comped his way to the end. He's sitting there being like, how did Suri get Matt to take her there? Mm -hmm. um, so I really think that like, obviously, if something were to change, um, if there were some like huge moves that happens that like made someone more deserving than Suri, like clearly um, he would vote for that person. I don't think that's happened yet. And I think that Corey is going to, you know, if he sees Suri knowing how she played in the first half and 
knowing how she managed to like survive the wreckage of like her alliance and still make it to the final two, I, I can't see a world where he doesn't vote for her. Do you think Corey's the kind of guy that's like, because we get these sometimes too, where you definitely don't want to be bitter. And so the person that gets you out, you almost overcredit them. Uh, like, oh man, well, you know, if, if they got me out, then uh, if, if they betrayed me uh, and tricked me, then like uh, I'm, uh, they definitely played the best. Do you think that Corey might be inclined to, to go in that direction? Depends on who it is. I don't think he would give like that credit to Blue, for instance, because I yeah, think well, because he, would... he didn't trust Blue, right? Yeah, he never right. I think that he <laughs> Blue as like the vendetta, like he he wouldn't see that as like, wow, she was the one who got me. I gotta give her props. I think that he would then go more based on like the game itself. I think that if like Jag or Matt were to take him out like this week, for instance, I, I think he would look at it as like that. Hey, they made the move. They got me. I was thinking about getting them. They got me before I got them. I don't think that if Cameron had gotten him out, <laughs> particularly, he would have been particularly uh, charitable to him. Um, but I do think that I do think that Corey will ultimately respect whoever gets him out, especially at this point where like kind of makes sense to get him out for a lot of people. I want to ask you about uh, the BB Comics was this weekend. Did you weigh in yet on Corey's comic, The Alba Corey? I, I hadn't really seen the comparison to Mark from BB19 until... The <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I mean, it really is, like, striking. Mm -hmm. it, it's so stupid. I mean, like, I like it for him because he is very generous. In terms uh, of his quad strength? Yeah, that is not Corey I know. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a little bit of a bulge there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why they needed that. Um, they got his widow's peak down. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You could have, but, yeah. We could have made a better one for Corey. But what is the, the joke here? That he's a student? Like, am I missing a pun oh. here on Alba Corey? Like, if I were to do one for Corey, like, there's so much material there. You could have done something with the mustache. You could have done something with um, the, the even, like, the pasta and noodles. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like, that mm -hmm. could have been funny. Like, the buttered pasta. Mm -hmm. Is, that, is that a staple for Corey? Yes, that's been one of the funniest things. He, at yeah. 3 a.m., will literally just, like, go into the kitchen, make himself a giant bowl an of entire pasta. box of pasta <laughs> yeah and like leave it in his room for like a week like mm -hmm. you know, he, he, that is like the most Corey thing that i've seen in this entire thing but you know that's the whole bb comics they always are a letdown um I, uh, felicia was the biggest disappointment for me mm. if i were to do felicia i would have done like i was actually thinking about her specifically i would have done like a kind of like a puppet master mastermind with like all of the um the groceries <laughs> like marching out from under her like she's like kind of like a shadowed caped figure the mm -hmm. groceries like marching out and like causing terror yeah that's what i want from bb comics like take the one funny thing from their season and like make that their whole personality yeah in a perfect world okay zach anything else you want to make sure that we cover here today yeah, there was one other thing that I'm really interested to see with Corey. Um, and that's, let's assume he makes it to next week. Let's assume, um, let's just say he wins HOH next week. I really, really am curious to see if he's able to make take the shot at Jag and Matt. Because it's very easy for us on the outset to say, like, well, obviously he's going to. Like, that is the correct move, and it is. Um, but he likes, like, Jag specifically so much, clearly. And that is a brutal move to make after Jag has saved him so many times in this game. Um, you know, I didn't realize when I went into Survivor how even in three days I would feel, like, so guilty trying to target people at my mm -hmm. time. Cordy's now spent 70-something days with these people. Um, and I, I am curious to see like if he's able to take that shot and because I don't I think he likely will just on a pure like you you need to. Um, 
but I, I also think that like it's really going to gut him, and I'm curious to see how he actually takes it. Forget Corey. Won't it be super awkward for you and Jazz? <laughs> oh, I'm. Yeah. I mean, Corey voted him out once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. I think we'll be okay. And the same if Jag were to take out Corey this week. Like, you know, I hang mm -hmm. out with Kathy. I hang out with Tori. Like, mm -hmm. I, I might be seeing Romeo and Brea. Yeah. Coming. I think he's the one Ika that lives in. The skinny guys are getting back together. Yeah. The skinny guy reunion. Come and see. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, Zach, thank you for making some time to uh, chat with us and uh, come back on and uh, discuss where. Corey goes and it, it is like just wild to it must be uh, so much fun like I'm sure stressful at times but you know he's got you know win equity here coming into the home stretch yeah and and look we are as the Wurtenberger family because now we're a reality television family like, yes locked in uh, are so grateful to CBS and so grateful for like you know the fact that this experience that most families get once the fact that we got it twice, the fact that I'm here, like if you had told me that I'd be doing like my second check-in on a mm -hmm. Big Brother season after I got voted out first in Survivor 42, uh, I wouldn't have believed it. Yeah. And so everything, regardless of how it plays on from here out, or even if he'd gotten first out on this season. Um, Zach, if you wanted to talk okay. about buddy games, we'd make a spot for you. <laughs> thank you well, let's see how uh let's see how the pageant girls keep going mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe that could be the next stop for the word burgers buddy games season two mm. buddy games would be great um i think tough as nails mm -hmm. uh, you know we've got some crafty cousins yeah okay that'd be very exciting all right zach what's coming up for you anything you want to promote um what's coming up for me you can follow me on twitter instagram at zach Wirt. Um, and come to Brea, come to the live show. It's going to be so much fun. Um, we have like basically the whole Wurtenberger family is coming. Nice. Um, yeah, no, I, I've been on a hardcore recruiting campaign with, uh, everyone that I, I know here, all my friends here, uh, going to be a lot of survivors there, a lot of big brother people. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be a great show. It's going to mm -hmm. be an amazing time. And yeah, yeah please come. Um, now, if Corey goes on to win, and now the Wurtenberger family comes into some money. Now, I did draft Corey in our podcaster draft. Will you buy me a cameo from Frankie Grande? Congratulating me on my win in the draft. The price has gone up. Frankie Grande is mm. like, you know. What are we talking? Triple digits? It's $200 now. But, well, I guess because that you're doing so much promotion. I guess I think I think the Grandes are having a moment right now. Mm -hmm. You a know, and back. back from the last Celebrity Big Brother, I guess I sort of I I told Cameo that like notify me when Todrick Hall is available, and I get like like alerts like Todrick Hall has dropped his price to twenty dollars. One of my uh, biggest regrets is not immediately after. Um, Immediately after season 24, Jasmine went on Cameo and she put herself at like $15. Mm -hmm. And I saw that and I was like, this is the biggest like steal mm -hmm. I've ever seen in my life. Yes. So I had a request which was um, that I wanted to do, which was, can you wish my brother happy birthday with like a food related metaphor? Yeah. Um, but can you do it for the next 10 years so that I could just keep recycling them? You wanted one? Can you record 10 cameos? I think that's against the bylaws. No, no. It would be like, a, hi, Corey. It's Jasmine. Hope your birthday's better than a ham or roasted turkey. Mm -hmm. And then stop and then do another one for mm -hmm. like my third birthday. But then the moment I went to book it, it was already up to like $50. Damn. Like she knew her value. Yeah. Okay. Well, Zach, we always appreciate the value that you bring to the podcast when you come on. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you all. Yes. And then Taryn, what's going on for you this weekend? Uh, I'll be on Twitch. You can find me on Instagram, hanging out, doing podcasts. Okay. 
Check out all of our podcast coverage that uh, I was super busy yesterday podcasting away. Uh, not to mention Taryn and I did the uh, patron Q&A yesterday, but also uh, got into buddy games with Jenny Autumn. Talked about the premiere of House of Villains as Zach mentioned. Taryn, have you watched House of Villains yet? I have. I saw a trailer for it. It didn't show, it didn't tell me anything about what the show actually was. Uh, mm-hmm. But I've heard it was good. It was it was good. Yeah, it was good. We had a fun podcast. We're still trying to decide whether or not we should have a, a weekly recap going. So we're trying to get uh, make a decision one way or the other on that with everything else that we have going on. Very, very good. And I'd say like the description of it is, is it feels like a parody of reality shows. Mm-hmm. What do yeah. they do? What do they do on the show? We don't quite know yet. Um, they live in the ha- the villains live in the house. I'm not even sure that they're gonna go home, but they're there and they're talking a big game in the confessionals. <laughs> it's just the whole show is just them talking well, themselves it, up. It was like mm-hmm. oh, it was like Omarosa starts coming out Corinne, and then Corinne's immediate response is like, "All right, well you're trying too hard to be a villain, so this is stupid." Mm-hmm. And then Corinne runs away and starts crying. Yeah. So. so it's, like, it's very meta. It's cool. Yeah, it's the whole very premise meta. is that the game never actually starts. They just I don't know if the game's ever going to start. Starts. Yeah, that it, <laughs> that I, I, it's not spoiling that uh, that we did not. There's no elimination in the first episode. So uh, some people are nominated, but there's no elimination in the first episode. So uh, we'll see, like if it ultimately ends up getting to a point where somebody goes home on House of Villains. But yeah, Joel McHale is great. It's a really fun uh, show. So uh, let's definitely want to see where it goes. All right, so check that all out. That's up in our Hit or Quit podcast feed. Go to robinswebsite.com slash hit or quit feed or in our uh, Rob is a podcast main feed as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.